With pediatrics, we need to start with some of the differences between the adult patient and the child or infant patient. And we'll start first with the airway. Their tongue is proportionally larger than an adult, so it takes up a little bit more room in their mouth. So any sort of swelling to that, it's easier to block the, uh, the oral pharynx. Their trachea is actually much smaller. Um, their, their windpipes just in general are much smaller. Newborns are only about the size of a straw and it's much more flexible and floppy. So when we do the head tilt chin lift on a baby, we need to make sure that we're very gentle with that because you can actually go too far and you end up kinking it off like you might kink off a garden hose. The epiglottis is uh, more of a horse shape, horseshoe shape and a little bit floppier and a little bit higher up. So again, it can swell and block it a little bit easier than it would on the adult patient. And when we're looking at respiratory rates, kids breathe much faster than adults. Their metabolic rate's just higher. Anytime though, we see a rate above one above 100. <laughs> That's heart rate. Anytime we see a respiratory rate above 60, we know we have respiratory distress or possibly moving into respiratory failure. The soft tissue under the jaw is a little bit uh, more flexible, so we're doing that head tilt chin lift. We need to make sure that we get on the mandible and not the soft tissue here. When we do that with an infant or child, we actually can push the tongue out of place and just, uh, not dislodge it, but can uh, displace it and block off the airway. Moving on to their heads, um, we have two fontanelles, one on the front and one on the back that are soft spots on infants. And this usually closes somewhere between one year, 18 months, somewhere in there, they, these close up. Uh, but these are areas where the skull's not fully formed, so be careful when you start pressing on them too much. Um, it is something that we want to assess in the small child or infant. If we see it depressed, so if it's sunken in, then uh, we know that they're probably dehydrated. So it's one of the signs we can use for dehydration or if it's bulging out, especially if they're running a fever, then we think in some sort of an infection. And if we see it bulging out, they have pressure in the skull. And if they have an infection with that, it's usually meningitis. Another difference in the child patient versus the adult patient is the head is proportionally larger. So if they fall, they're more likely to strike their head. But also when we put them in spinal motion restrictions, we need to consider that, especially the occiput, the back of the head, is much larger in a child or infant than it is in the adult. So when you're putting them on a backboard, you have to make sure you pad underneath their shoulders, and that will then line things up. You want to line up the opening of the ear with the anterior surface uh, or the anterior part of the shoulder. If those are lined up, you're probably in neutral position. Moving down to the chest, the chest wall is much more pliable, so we know that doing CPR in an infant or child will less likely to break the ribs. The ribs are more likely to bend than break. However, when they receive a blow to the chest from trauma, that force may not break their ribs. They don't expect to see as many flail segments, but that force will be transmitted to the lungs and the, and the heart. So you can have a cardiac contusion or a pulmonary contusion. Their lungs are much more fragile than adults, so seeing a pulmonary contusion or the signs of a pulmonary contusion are much more common in children than it would be for adults. Their abdomen is softer. They don't have the tummy muscles yet, so their liver and their spleen are more exposed, so any trauma to the abdomen is um, has a greater risk of internal bleeding. And a lot of times their um, seat, uh, car seat, seat belts, whatever they're using, may not fit perfectly across the pelvis. And if any of those straps end up across the abdomen, it can cause some, some trauma from car wrecks. So we have to think about internal bleeding more with infants and children. It's also part of the reason why we don't do abdominal thrusts on infants as they don't have those tummy muscles yet. So if we're squeezing on them, we can damage their internal organs. So for infants, remember we do back blows and chest thrusts to relieve choking. The extremities are more pliable. The bones just bend. So we don't see as many um, true breaks like we do the adults, or if it does break, it's more of a green stick splint splintering type fracture. Not gonna be able to tell that in the field, but just realize that a lot of times their bones can bend a little bit further than an adult before they begin to break. As far as their skin, it's a little um, softer, a little more fragile, so it tears a little bit easier, but they also have a much larger surface to volume ratio. So they have more skin than volume compared to an adult. This makes them much more susceptible to heat gain and heat loss. So if it's extremely cold or hot, they're more likely to um, have a heat or a cold emergency. So you have to suspect that a little bit sooner in children than you do adults. And if you're treating for shock, make sure that you keep them warm because they will lose that heat even faster than an adult will. Going along with metabolic rates, um, their heart rates are gonna be faster and you can look at some charts for different rates for, for children, but don't be surprised to see infants' heart rates in the 120s to 140s and children's around 100 to 120. Their blood pressures are a little bit different also. We use 90 plus two times their aging years. 
So if we had a four-year-old, four times two is eight, add that to 90, I would expect a systolic blood pressure around 98. When I'm looking at shock, we use 70 plus two times their age in years. So 70 plus two times four is eight, so 78. If the systolic blood pressure was below 78, I would suspect that they're in decompensated shock. When we're looking at blood sugars, um, they can burn through the sugars, uh, their energy a little bit faster than, than we do as adults. Um, if we see blood sugars below 60 to 70, we should consider treating that. So those are a few of the differences between adults and children or pediatric patients. Hopefully this will help you when you are going through your assessments and running your simulations and maybe when you're taking care of your patients too. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or go ahead and ask me in class.